Welcome to the Crucible Project podcast. The Crucible Project is a nonprofit organization committed to creating a world of men and women who live with integrity, grace, and courage, helping them to fulfill their God-given purpose. This podcast will discuss important and sometimes difficult topics while delivering practical life applications with men and women who are currently practicing this work. We are igniting Christ-like change in men and women through experiences of radical honesty and grace. It's very yeah. easy in the regular world to never allow that kind of space for like introspection, which I was kind of aware of that too. Like, oh, I need to actually like set myself up with some of that to pay attention to the point on inside. It's pretty easy to just be distracted. Hey, welcome back to the Crucible Project podcast. My name is Joy, and I'm your host today. I am here today with a very special guest, uh, my friend Mackenzie. I'm so excited for you to get to know her um, for a lot of different reasons, but one of them is because a lot of the guests that we have on our podcast are people who have been doing this work for quite a while. Um, You know, they went on their initial weekend five years ago, 10 years ago. They've been in groups or been leaders in the organization there's not a lot of times that we're able to catch someone right after their initial weekend. And so uh, Mackenzie is bravely joining us today. And uh, for context, she went on her initial weekend Friday to Sunday. And today is the following Wednesday. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. so we are fresh. So hey, Mackenzie, how are you today? Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks. Good. All right. Well, why don't you tell us before we get into what your experience was like, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and who you are and what's going on at home? Sure. Um, I'm Mackenzie. I um, am a mom of six. I'm a foster mom. I homeschool. Um, I live out in the country. I love the outdoors. I'm like kind of like a pretend farmer. I've um, been married to my husband, Brian, for 15 years. And yeah, that's like that's my biggest stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, life is definitely full for you. I love, um, mm-hmm. did I see you're wearing your chicken mom shirt today? Oh yes. Yep. I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> also a chicken mom. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> well, let's jump in. So first of all, what, what got you interested in crucible? I know that our husbands are, are connected. Yeah. Um, but let's, let's start with that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the first time I heard about Crucible was because my husband attended his initial weekend like eight years ago. It was actually quite a long time ago. And I, I knew he had quite an experience by like just some major change when he got home and he has continued, um, his work and literally every, you know, it's every two weeks that he goes and every two weeks it's like, I see a shift in him. I see him like just like lighter. I see him, his perspective change. And so I've always been intrigued. Um, But for a long time, I kind of just told myself like, it's not for me. Like I am too busy probably, you know, I do have like all these kiddos and I think I just always was telling myself like, oh, someday I can, but like, and now someday came for a long time. I was just kind of like, it was like this dream that was like really far out there for me. Yeah, that makes sense. And you know, I, I can echo what you're saying. Um, you know, it's every other week that our husbands go to this group and Mm -hmm. yeah, there's always just, even though it's just meeting as a group, right? Like it's not a whole weekend. It's not going to volunteer. It's, but it's that something about being in community with other people who have had, um, a similar experience or are at least interested in soul work and being Mm -hmm. intentional with one another, um, that it creates a shift and a, and a way to refocus. So So yeah, we've had all this time. It wasn't your time. It wasn't your time. Yeah. Um, so what was the shift? What, what made it your time now? Um, yeah. What made it my time? There was a couple, I guess like a couple little pieces. Um, one piece was that I'm not pregnant and I'm not nursing anybody. (laughs) (laughs) So it's always helpful. (laughs) Yeah. Like there's just like, okay, that, that barrier wasn't there for leaving for a whole weekend. Um, I had really been coming to a boiling point in my own spirit, honestly. Mm. Like I, there was enough pressure internally that even though there was even a a retreat this weekend, this last weekend, that is normally something I always lead. Um, Mm. Even when those dates were there together, it would have been super easier for me to say, oh no, I've got this responsibility. 
it was strong enough inside me that I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to equip all these other leaders to take care of that, that retreat that I normally run because Mm -hmm. this leader needs to, I need to take care of me. I I knew it like pretty Mm -hmm. strongly. Um, And yeah, and I don't want to say like crisis level, but like almost crisis level in myself that I was like, oh my goodness, I can't, I just can't keep, keep being where I'm at. Hmm. Yeah. So what did you want when you were going into the weekend? You know, if, if you haven't been on a retreat yet, you get some homework to do leading up to Mm -hmm. it. Um, that helps you think through some of these things. And what was that like for you? What did you want for yourself? Yeah. So before I went, like I knew I wanted peace and it felt like so unreachable. Like, Mm -hmm. Even saying it almost kind of sounded stupid to me to like, what a dumb goal. Like, how will you ever even get there? Peace and like a clarity, I had said. And I knew that in my spirit, like I wanted, I wanted to see things clearly. Like, I want to know why this life that like, I'm a believer and I've been on, I've been following Jesus a long time, this like abundant life that he's always promised. I was kind of like, why don't I have it? Like, what, what is it? Like, it felt like I was blinded. Like, I literally felt like everything was just kind of murky when I even considered that question. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That abundant life, um, it's such a, such a interesting concept when Mm -hmm. you think about the things that we take on then, especially as wives and moms and people Mm -hmm. in ministry. Um, there's so many things that can fill the days that, your life might feel abundant as in full, mm-hmm. but not necessarily abundant as in full in your soul. Um, it's full 100%. in the minutes. percent. Yeah. Yeah. I can resonate with that. So, I mean, in spite of all of those things, right, we talk about mm-hmm. um, blocks. What are the things that are blocking you? And so a lot of times, yeah, our schedules can be blocks for us. Um, yeah. Our kids, as much as we adore them and do whatever we can for them, yeah. um, there's needs that have to get done. Someone has to do the dishes. Someone has to make the food. Someone has yeah. to do the laundry and make sure that everybody's alive and functioning yeah. and fed. Mm-hmm. So those things can be blocks. But I'm wondering what about you was blocking you um, from having some of that peace and clarity yeah. Uh, before you went into the retreat. Well, I didn't know it until I was in the retreat, but it got very clear to me that my biggest thing that was blocking me is that, like you were saying, the abundant life thing, it was like I was filling it so full, like scrambling for like how I could do more, be more, do more, be more. Mm-hmm. And that 100% was blocking my peace, blocking my like even ability to be receiving like love receiving Mm. care because I think I just, I had for sure had this like dark, dark background noise that like, you're not quite good enough, Ken's. And if you just do more, if you just say yes more to more people, someday, eventually you're going to be good enough and then everything's going to feel right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in light of that, that dark message, you know, we talk about in crucible, the messages that come up. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like that was one that came up for you during oh, yeah. your retreat. Mm-hmm. Um, were there other messages that needed to be unearthed so that you could step into finding this peace and clarity? Yeah. I mean, that was a huge one. I mean, connected with the, you're not quite good enough was the like, just do more, just mm. do more than you did. It's just like this sneaky lie. Yeah. Um, but then another one that kind of unearthed for me was like how much I didn't really allow myself to feel anger. And mm. I really have a lot to explore there still, but I do believe like blocking, blocking a whole emotion has to have some damage for my soul. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that's tied yet. Like I, like, like you said, like, you know, I'm 72 hours out. That was, (laughs) it was some really loud, really clear things. And that's Mm -hmm. like a little background one that I'm like, Oh, already in 72 hours, I've been paying attention to just my spirit. Like, Oh, I felt angry about that right now. Okay. I'm like, feel like a little baby, like just learning how to walk. Like, Oh, this is what it feels like to feel angry. Okay. I can feel angry. What is that about? Like, just kind of like playing around. Like, what is it like to be angry? (laughs) Yeah. So like you just mentioned, 72 hours out, maybe not even quite 72 hours out um, because you had a bit of a drive home. Mm -hmm. So what was that like even leaving the retreat? You know, you go in Friday feeling like, 
I have this huge want. I don't even, I feel dumb even saying it because I don't know how to get it. You uncovered some pieces of it. Nothing is fixed in a weekend, right? We say a lot of times in Crucible, the journey continues because there's never a point where you're like, I did it, I'm fixed. Um, But the weekend serves as a way to really blast open, like bring some dynamite to some of those dark places. Um, And then you're in all of that, you're surrounded by all these women, and then you get in a car. And everything is a little quieter. Um, so what was it like driving home, getting home, you know, un- unpack some of those like first hours for us. Yeah. So you're right. It was about like a three and a half hour drive home. And I did have the privilege of being with a couple other women who were on retreat. So the stark difference between our drive there and our drive home, <laughs> that was the first big, like, oh my gosh. The way there, I was probably feeling like I was carrying a thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about the other girls in my car, but definitely had a lot more. You could just feel we all had our stuff we were like hanging on to. Even just like some like trying to make small talk, you know, just like a really different shift from our drive home where I felt like we were just all kind of busted wide open. That was another thing I noticed how starved my soul was Mm -hmm. for true connection with others how much I block myself from that, how much I think, oh, nobody wants to hear it, Ken's, or nobody wants to be in it with you, right? What an absolute blessing it is to like walk with others. That was super clear to me on our walk, on our drive home. Also just the mad pace the rest of the world was moving at because on retreat, like everything felt Mm. a little slower. It felt like time was a little bit paused. And that was for sure just walking into the gas station to go grab a coffee. I was like, Oh my goodness, I forgot this world. (laughs) Um, But Mm -hmm. then getting home, Oh my gosh. I cried so many times. Like I cried so many times all weekend. I keep telling people like, I feel like I get (laughs) cried like five gallons of tears out, which is seriously an amazing feeling. If you've been blocking that at all or, and then I was like so soft and like in touch So like as soon as my kids walked to the front door, I was like just mushy and like Mm. got to feel like all the love and my husband too. My husband who is somebody I I like often block and like being with him, I like couldn't stop like wanting to be close to him and like wanting to just like share with him. And like we had all the things, right? So it was kind of like we were paused because we had had six kids and they were mama hungry. And so we would like look across the room and I could just be like, he's waiting to hear. Like, I was like so connected. It was like, so I just want to live like that. I want to live that connected. So did you guys get a chance to connect that night and talk? Yes. And then we stayed up so long (laughs) talking, like so long, which normally I am really like, I think because I was caring so much, I'm pretty, um, when I finally get quiet, like when the kids are finally in bed, I'm normally like just... I got to be by myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm often blocking that connection. And I'm often like, I just want to read my book. I just want to read one page out. And so I don't even remember the last time that we talked that Mm -hmm. long. And I was, I don't think I've been that honest with Mm -hmm. him. Oh my gosh, maybe ever. But honest and like not, not as, not really scared of being honest like I normally am. And it was like really good. Like it was, and I mean, obviously you're dealing with another human. So you never know how someone's going to respond to you. Um, but like, I, I was like still so glad in myself that I was being honest, even if it wasn't received the way that I would want it to be. I was like, I'm going to be the girl who is here. Yeah. And it did turn out really good for me, (laughs) um, to be able to, yeah, just connect with him. And he was like, so, and obviously he has been doing this work for a super long time. So he was like super tender about it. And he understood what the heck I was even talking about. <laughs> you know, that is a gift. That was a blast. There's, yes. um, you know, there's something to be said for when your spouse or your significant other is also involved in the work, um, whether it's through Crucible yeah. or a different organization. Um, you know, there's something about that shared language of being able to speak not just heart to heart, but also soul to soul um, that yeah. really changes things. And it's not perfect. Yeah. And it's not the fix all. But... You know, we right. talk a lot of times about it being like another tool in the tool belt. And mm-hmm. some people mm-hmm. go their whole life and the only tool that they have in their tool belt is a hammer or, mm-hmm. um, and they, you know, come out angry and smashing things. Sometimes people mm-hmm. go their whole life and the only tool that they have is a screwdriver that kind of like digs in and manipulates and changes. Mm-hmm. But the more that we lean into this type of work, the more we can actually like not only 
gather more tools, but then learn how to use them in effective Mm -hmm. and productive ways. Because sure, I can use a hammer to put in a screw, but it's not going to be as effective (laughs) as if I had a screwdriver. And just like I can hammer in a nail with a screwdriver, it's not going to be as effective without a hammer. So Monday morning, Tuesday morning, you know, it's sometimes it's easy to come off of a high experience and then reality Mm -hmm. sets back in. And, you know, I, I found myself when I got home, sometimes like a wondering, was that real? Was I actually there? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I had moments where it's like, oh my gosh, I found my peace. I found my clarity. And then I wake up and I'm like, where the Mm -hmm. heck did it go? (laughs) So (laughs) what was it like for you? Yeah. Yeah. So the full first day, almost two full days, I literally kind of felt high. Like (laughs) I was like walking around on the clouds and I felt like I had this like, like God goggles on like, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, this is what the world is really. Like I felt like I had this like God sized rose colored glasses kind of like, oh, I can see my kids for really who they are. Oh, I can be really, really good. Um, uh, obviously, like some heart, I mean, my kids were really super needy because I had been mm-hmm. gone. And so there's a lot of times that I normally probably would have lost it. And I didn't, but I did feel I took this time like um, I was made aware during the weekend, too, of just that, like having your wiser self decide mm-hmm. like, oh, how am I going to respond to this? Which a lot of times I would just mm-hmm. lose it. Um, and I could feel that like, oh, yeah, pause. Like I, w- I walked outside multiple times on Monday and I, I didn't, I wasn't even to this like big old flustered, um, state. I was like, Oh, I can feel this starting to rise in me. And I do want to show up different than normal. And I do know I need to go for mm-hmm. a walk. And so I like took it. And like I said, I, I keep having this picture of this like stumbly newborn or like I grew up on a farm and when a horse is born, it's hilarious because they're this huge gangly gawky thing. And they're like trying to learn how to walk on those gooey legs. And their legs are like jello, like little baby jello hooves. And I keep picturing that of myself. Mm-hmm. Like, here we go. Figuring out, okay, how do I do this differently this time? And um, in so many situations, literally in the last 72 <laughs> hours. So I still talk about the anger rising. I talked about kind of like giving myself some peace and calm when, when I'm starting to feel overwhelmed with the kid. Um, but also... Um, just today getting a message that really wanted me to really own someone else's whole emotional experience of something Mm. and stumbling. I stumbled. I right away was like, Oh my gosh, spinning, circling. How do I fix this for this person? Um, my dear sweet husband called me. And so then I was able to talk to him and like with the language, like I know this about myself. So he was able to like speak some truth. And I stumbled along out of it way faster than I normally would have. Mm. So I just feel like I'm in this like practice zone right yeah. now. But yeah, some like really high um, connection. And then I noticed, I think it was today I noticed kind of starting to like dissociate mm. a little bit. And I was like, wait, I don't want to do that. I love <laughs> the connection so much. Like I don't want to go in my shell. So that's another like zone I noticed like, oh, let's practice like pretty regularly. I can just kind of buckle up and. Um, button mm-hmm. up and I don't want to I don't want yeah. to it was like so delicious to have like really true connection mm. that's awesome that's I mean I love the way that you're describing that and that's exactly how I put my own soul work journey uh, you know even now I'm I'm in a different group where I'm a participant and so I'm learning new things and practicing different things and it feels fumbly and it can be so frustrating because yeah. it's I'm you know a whole adult I've been doing this for a while mm-hmm. having emotions and <laughs> functioning out in the real world why does it still feel weird to get in touch with some of these parts but yeah it's, it's all just part of the journey <laughs> yes well so let's talk <laughs> about you know at the retreat there's a lot of things um that we, you know, different processes and practices that we do. Um, And some Mm -hmm. of them are uh, opportunities to step into radical honesty. Um, You know, I know you mentioned before that you have been in ministry. Um, And my my judgment from my own place is that what's, you know, when I'm in a place of being in active ministry, it can be hard to feel like I can be vulnerable and authentic because what if somebody hears what I say and goes, whoa, sidelines, you shouldn't be in this Mm -hmm. role. So what was it like Mm -hmm. for you 
to be offered an invitation to step into radical honesty and uh, and receive radical grace. Was it scary? Did you did you do it? Yeah. What was it like? Yes. Yeah, it was totally scary. And for sure in regular life, I, I almost wonder now that you just said that too, I wonder if that was one of my blocks for so long um, saying yes to coming to the Crucible Project mm-hmm. weekend um, because I was actively in ministry. And yeah, I like sometimes can't even fathom like being fully honest and feeling totally safe because of that or being in the public eye a little bit. Um, but that's obviously been super damaging to myself. Yeah, so I was super nervous super nervous, super uncomfortable. Like my whole body responded to like having to do that, like shaky, like my belly Mm -hmm. hurt. Like, um, yeah, everything in my, my body was telling me don't, it's not safe. Like it's not safe to be like vulnerable or honest. Um, but then it's like I said about the five gallons of tears thing, like puking out like your grossest self and having someone remind you like, well, first of all, having everyone in there, like, accept you. And then, like, being reminded of what Jesus did for us. Like, like his grace is for that. His grace wasn't for me to, like, pretend I had it together. Mm-hmm. Um, that was, like, really freeing. Like, I actually feel thousands of pounds lighter walking around in mm-hmm. the world. One of the things I've experienced, I know our executive director, Roy, has actually talked about this as well, um, that when you grow up in a Christian environment— it's very easy to have head knowledge of your faith. And, you know, there's heart moments, um, but it yeah. feels uh, like a disconnect having that heart knowledge. Um, yeah. And something about being in that type of environment where not only are you sharing your most vulnerable self and being received and reminded of grace, but you're watching others do the same. Um, you know, there's yeah. there's something about that that connects Um, in a different way, it landed Christ in my heart in a different way. Like, oh yeah, this is why he came. Yes. Like, I feel like, I mean, I've certainly preached it. I've certainly said that truth over and over again and 100% believed it to be true Mm -hmm. for all the people I was saying Mm -hmm. it to. There is, there was definitely a little black there. You know, we've talked about this a little bit, but, uh, are there other ways? How did the retreat challenge you? Oh my gosh, so many ways. <laughs> I mean, even just the discomfort of like silence, mm. which I actually really, really love silence, but there's also just discomfort in it because you have to like listen to yourself and you have to be with yourself. There seems to be ample amount of time where it was like, that was the only option um, mm. was to really pay attention to what's going on internally. There is no mm-hmm. way to distract yourself and yeah. or myself. And well, that was really uncomfortable for a while. I also like really, really wanted it and was like, I already did know I was craving that. It's still like a scary zone to walk into. It's very yeah. easy in the regular world to never allow that kind of space for like introspection, which I was kind of aware of that too. Like, oh, I need to actually like set myself up with some of that to pay attention mm-hmm. to what's going on inside. It's pretty easy to just be distracted. Another thing that I noticed is that challenged me for sure was because I didn't know like really anything that was going to unfold and because I wasn't in charge of it, which I'm pretty used to being in charge of and leading everything that's going to unfold. I had to really come to grips with like my, my uh, struggle to trust others (laughs) And like really just had to totally surrender to the process. And I did. And I decided it really early on, which I Mm -hmm. think really did was like a catalyst for just like massive things to happen because I did just decide like I'm here, I'm going to fully trust it and I'm going to do everything in my power to, to like just participate. Mm -hmm. And I do think that was like, it was super challenging, but I'm super glad I did it trusting the process is tricky, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it is a willful decision, um, especially in those moments. And I found myself in the same place of, okay, I didn't come here to fight this. I came here to get something for myself. So I'm going to fight myself to stay in it. Yes. 
um, especially when there's unknowns, it's so easy for me to go to a place of critical. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, what can I get from this? I'm like, well, why would she say it like that? I could have said that so much better. (laughs) Or man, I could have done that different and it would have been better. And really the answer is no, I couldn't have done it different or better. (laughs) (laughs) But it's it's so much easier for me to criticize when Mm -hmm. I'm in a place of unknown. Um, So I honor you for taking that risk of deciding early on, I'm going to stay in it. And uh, it sounds like it was, what would you say? Like, was it a good experience for you? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely, (laughs) definitely got what I went there for. (laughs) Good, good. Well, one of the things that we do on, uh, on the last day of the retreat is set up a little bit of time for you to connect with other women and uh, make a bit of a plan of what does it look like to go back home? Mm-hmm. You know, you had this experience where you spent so many hours away, disconnected in this suspended reality, mm-hmm. looking at yourself and everybody at home was still at home doing their thing. What was your plan for coming back home for that first, you know, week or two weeks? Um, And how's that going? Yeah. So my plan was to follow up with one gal. I've actually followed up with four girls, Um, (laughs) like in in both ways. Like I've had some reach out to me, keep me accountable to some things that I had said. And then I've reached out to, and that's felt really, really good. And I have been reminded of things that I said I was going to do. And I also really did feel like, oh, this is a blessing that I get to step into this other woman's story too. And she mm-hmm. said, thank you for reaching out. I was totally not going to do that now. And now I am because I don't want to lie to you. And then she, so it was like, great. It was really good. I do think that that accountability piece is super important. Um, so had that plan this week. Like, you, I mean, I'm only three days in, like you said. Right. Um, <laughs> super excited. The journey is early. Week. Yes. Super connect, excited to connect with some of the women from my retreat this Friday for lunch and um, looking at what that looks like to have some kind of group going forward regularly. I really, really want to make that happen. And I am super excited for like what this looks like when you're actually weaving it in to regular life in like the real time. Mm-hmm. Like I just can imagine like so many things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think of it as like – drinking a huge glass of water. Yeah. And so when you're, when you're super thirsty, it's really easy to drain a whole glass of water and feel better. But what does it look like to figure out how to hydrate yourself throughout the day so that you don't get to a point or throughout the days, the weeks, so you don't get to a point again where you're so thirsty. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm excited too for us to explore what a group look like in our area. And, yes. um, you know, that's one of the things that I appreciate about Crucible is it's like we recognize it's not about the weekend. Mm-hmm. It's about every day after that and what you choose to do with it. And there are resources like free groups that you can even start yourself. Like once yeah. you've been through a retreat, you can lead a group in your area um, for other people who have been through the retreat, there's different curriculum for people who haven't been. If you want to introduce people to Crucible and, um, you know, I feel like we're set up well to continue to bring this to other women in our community and see mm-hmm. what God does with that. Last question for you. What advice? Well, maybe not last one, but what advice <laughs> would you give to someone considering attending a weekend? Just do it. I would really, but I would advise that you're to a place that you aren't going to mess around. Like, mm. Don't do it if you're kind of like still dabbling, dabbling in like self-care or like different like, oh, maybe it's just this one little fix I'm looking for. Like do it when you're ready to be committed to like taking a full look at yourself and like really doing whatever it takes. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get what you want? And like I think you do. And I do think like God had that in mind for me. Like Mm. I think there's a reason why I didn't go till now. And So yeah, go, but get yourself to the place where you're ready to be scrappy and be really uncomfortable because it's worth it and mm. then go. So now my, my true last question, did you get the peace and the clarity that you wanted when you went into it? Yes, 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 I did. And I know there's more to come. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Abundant life, right? Mm-hmm. Life to the full. Yes. Well, Mackenzie, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sharing. Is there anything else that you want to share with us uh, before I let you get going? I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you so much for the work you do and anyone else in this community. What Mm. you guys are doing is really important, really sacred work. And I know you know that, but I'm sure you don't hear it enough. So thank you. Thank you. 
For more information about our weekends, please go to thecrucibleproject.org. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Rate and review wherever you are listening and subscribe on your preferred podcast platform. Also, don't forget to check out myjourneyto.com for your free two-week trial. That's myjourneyto.com. Thank you for listening.